Welcome to the homestead. Today we're going to show you how we root fig tree cuttings and some other cuttings as well. We're also going to show you some alternatives to store-bought rooting hormone compounds that we use. Let's get going. So there are a lot of methods out there for rooting these and I'm going to go over the method that I thought made the most sense. So I'm going to go through all the steps of what we've done for rooting these. So first things first, this is the medium that we're going to root our cuttings in. This consists of one part of this organic or partially organic seed starting mix and then one part of a potting mix that had a lot of large chunks of pine bark in it. We then added to that about five cups of perlite. The total amount here is about the size of one of these bags or 12 quarts. So I'd say six quarts of the seed starting mix and six quarts of the potting soil mix with the large chunks of bark in it and then the five cups of your perlite. Now to this we've added roughly one quart and this has dried out a bit since I did it a little while ago. Roughly one quart of water and mixed it thoroughly. So it is fairly well hydrated and it clumps together pretty good, but it's not soaking at all. You can see how the consistency is right there. So to root the cuttings, we're not going to use any cups or anything like that. We're just going to use this smaller, clear, plastic, uh, Sterilite container, which has a top, and I'll show you why that is important in a minute. But this is roughly, I'd say, 12 to 15 quarts itself. We're going to take about half the mixture and bring it into the new container. And this is gonna be our base to start from. A big shout out and thank you to the Texas Boys YouTube channel. I met up with a dad from Texas Boys. We had a cup of coffee last week and we talked for a couple of hours and he actually brought me their food forest in a box. They sell this on their website and it's got, I think it has some different things in it all the time, but this one that he gave me has figs, it's got mulberries, which I don't have on my homestead, so I'm very thankful for that. They've also got blackberries, pears, and some white peach. And of course, if you want to head over to their website, you can check this out. Okay, now let's talk about our fig cuttings in particular. But this is true throughout all of these different cuttings, is they need to go in the proper orientation to grow and to root. Roots will come down and the leaves will come up, obviously. But if you flip it upside down and you don't know which way it's going, then it's not really gonna work at all. So for these figs, the way to tell is right here. When you look at these nodes on this fig cutting, now you can see there's a large portion here and that's where the fruit was. And there's a smaller one on top. The fig came from the bottom and the leaf will come from the top. And that is true the entire way around, wherever you find one of these nodes. So for this one in particular, down is this way. It needs to be planted that way and the roots will come from this portion down. Now I want you to find your bottom node on your cutting. And under that cutting, we're going to make a 45 degree cut as close to it as we can. And of course, you want sterilized pruning shears and cutting tools before you do any of this. So right here is our bottom node. We're gonna cut that off like that. Do that with all of your cuttings and then we're on to the next step. Now a lot of people will sanitize the actual cuttings themselves in some peroxide and water. I haven't done that. I don't think it's necessary, but hey, if you wanna do it, cool. Now what we are doing is called the pre-rooting method. Now you can direct pot these, but it's a little bit more difficult in my opinion. In here you have a little bit more control over the moisture and you can monitor them a little bit more closely. Out in a greenhouse or outside somewhere, it might be a little bit more difficult in that direct pot method. Okay, the next part is important and that is what we do at the bottom here to induce rooting. And our rooting hormone is going to help or our alternative methods is going to help. But what we need to do is to tell this cutting that we want roots down here at this portion. And to help that, we're going to make a slice down the side all the way to the bottom. Some methods show that you can take a full 
big slice, like shave the side off of it down to the bottom, down to the cambium layer. What I've done is just cut into the top of the cambium layer in several spots. In my opinion, this is better because if you shave off a big portion of that side or multiple sides, actually, you can uh, induce rotting quicker because it's going to be sitting in a moist medium for a long period of time to root up to 30 days. So as long as you cut down the side like that in maybe three to four places, it should tell this cutting that that's where it needs to root, where that cambium layer has been pierced. So we have our growing medium here in this container. And the reason I told you that you needed a top earlier was to keep the moisture in here from really evaporating quickly out of that soil. It is also good because when we lay these down in here on their side, the tops of your cuttings, you don't want to dry out. Now you can use some clear plastic film. So this is some uh, press and seal to put it on there and wrap it around so the top doesn't dry out. But be careful because you don't want mold to grow in and under that. You can also use that fancy uh, grafting tape or whatever, but <laughs> the press and seal works just fine. So what we're gonna do here, you can see I've created kind of this wave in here. This is gonna be the first layer. We're gonna lay these down so that you have two nodes in the soil itself, okay? So we got two nodes, two nodes, two nodes. We've got our top sticking out like this. So we've got a layer of cuttings like this. On top of that, we're gonna make, we're gonna put some more of the, uh, the growing medium to kind of keep them in place like this. Now you can see they're sticking out to the side. We can let continue to layer different cuttings here on the top. So I can get off these figs on the bottom and then on the next layer above that. So our mulberries would be here. So with the mulberries, we're gonna do the exact same thing, but here's what we didn't do yet. And I wanna show you that. And that is the alternative to the rooting hormone or rooting compound out there to promote root growth, but also to protect from viruses and bacteria and things like that. So the fancy store-bought rooting compounds, not necessary. If you've got some of these in your home and every homesteader should have these in their home. One of them is raw honey. Everybody knows honey is antibacterial, antiviral. It's got a lot of medicinal properties. And when you put this on your cutting, it will act the same way as it does when you put it in your body. It's very healthy and it's healthy for these cuttings. So you can use honey as a rooting compound. Additionally, cinnamon. Cinnamon is also known to be antibacterial and antiviral. It also keeps pests away. So if you're doing these where you've got some ants and you don't want these getting, uh, the ants getting near or any other bugs getting near, cinnamon is a really good one to use. Here's the other one. This is aloe. Everybody should have an aloe plant or several in their homes because it's very soothing, very medicinal. And it does a very similar job to what the honey or the cinnamon does. Now, if you're buying it in the container from the pharmacy or the pharmaceutical area of say, I don't know, your grocery store, that has some other so I would avoid that. I would highly recommend that you get an aloe plant. All you're gonna do is snip a little piece off of the end of this and use that aloe juice on the end of your cutting. Okay, last but not least, and it's actually highly touted by a lot of growers, and that is your own saliva. Human saliva has enzymes in it, which can be protective. One is called amylase, I think it is, and it is, uh, helpful in killing off bad bacteria that would attack your root cutting. So if you want, that's totally free. You can just spit on the end of these. Now, another one that I don't have here with me in the house is apple cider vinegar. We just don't use it, but it is an ingredient actually in a lot of the store-bought rooting hormone uh, in compounds that you can buy. And I believe you'll find cinnamon in some of them too. So if you had these laying around the house, there's really no need to buy that other stuff. 
So another one I've heard about is aspirin, but there really wasn't that much information out there on how it interacted with cuttings, but some people said they used it. Now that you have all the layers that you're gonna do in your container, however many that is, we're gonna cover up this layer here. You're gonna get a little extra soil or growing medium back here toward the back. Make sure they stay in place. And then I'm gonna give them just a slight bit of additional water, right? Not too much at all, because we did have a decently moist medium to start with. Now from here, we're gonna put the top on and we are going to get them on a heat mat. So these do not need a ton of warmth to be able to root. Your normal 72 degrees in the house is fine. And our heat mat underneath will be roughly 75 degrees, just to get that temperature warmer on the bottom. And you can see that there's a decent amount of drainage underneath. So that first layer of soil gives it good drainage and keeps those bottoms of the, um, the cuttings out of a, an area that there's a ton of moisture. If you wanted to bring these up a little bit, you can do that if you're afraid that you've got too much moisture in your medium. But you're not gonna be adding a lot to it, right? So you're gonna keep this top on, which is gonna keep a lot of the moisture in there for a decent period of time. Additionally, that perlite that we put in there, it's gonna help hold moisture but not too much moisture for a decent period of time. Now your cuttings, you do not want to disturb them, especially with figs. Figs take an incredibly long period of time to root. So if you want to do one container with all figs, that might be a good thing to do instead of mixing them up like I did. But we've got our figs at the bottom because they take the longest. How long you're asking? Well, up to three weeks to a month to actually start to shoot out a tiny little root. So we don't want to disturb them at all. Now you can put a little probe for the humidity level inside of here. You want to maintain about 40 to 50% humidity. And in the winter time here in Texas, it's about 25 to 30%. So a little bit higher moisture or a little bit higher humidity is going to be uh, retained with this top on. But if you think that there's too much humidity in there, just take the top off kind of turn it sideways like that to keep some of the moisture and humidity in there, but you're let, letting a little out as well. Now the combination of the heat mat with the moisture in there is gonna create a little bit higher humidity. So you wanna regulate the temperature on that. If it's 72 here in the house, like I said, I'm only gonna have it 75, 76 on that heat mat. Now make sure these stay out of direct sunlight as well. So when I'm doing my seed starting in here and my seed germinating, it's gonna be dark, but after a while I'm gonna to need to turn these lights on and those figs really shouldn't be in there. So we're gonna move them to a different location. And if you're interested in any of the seed starting equipment that I have here or any of the equipment that I've used today, we have everything linked in the description below the video. Now it's time to get the other ones rooted. Again, a big thank you to the Texas boys for these. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them for me in the comments section below. Now go check out this video right here, which is our complete spring planting guide for zone 8B here in East Texas. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.